Good afternoon, everyone. Ariel Onstott here. We are outside of Savage Arena on UT's campus. I'm going to turn it around so you can see. We are here along the processional route. Uh, the hearse has just left Savage Arena. It left probably uh, less than 10 minutes ago. And now we are beginning the processional. So majority of Toledo police squad cars just left. Officer stalkers, friends and family uh, have pulled out as well. And now we are seeing all of these police cars from departments across the state, even Michigan and other parts of the U.S. lined up beginning to make that journey as well. You can see the red and blue lights are flashing. Just a few moments ago, we heard sirens beeping as they got ready for what's next. You can see also just the amount of support from the types of departments represented. We have Warren Township here in front of us from Michigan. We have City of Girard. We have Johnston. We have Perrysburg. We have pretty much any uh, police department within our area here in the Midwest is here. Uh, Dayton Police, Avon Lake, all of them coming to show their support. So for those of you just tuning into the Facebook Live as well, the hearse has recently, in about 10 minutes ago, left um, UT's Savage Hall and officer Brandon Stalker's friends and family drove along behind it. And then once they passed, friends and family in their cars passed as well following that processional. And now we have all of the cars at the top here on North Douglas Road beginning to make that journey as well. The reason this is taking so long is because there are that many police cars in this procession. So at first you have to get in single file with that hearse friends and family vehicles and Toledo police squad cars. Then all of these other cars from different departments across our area will fall in behind Toledo police to show support for a fallen hero. If you've been watching the coverage, you really got that sense of brotherhood being so important in terms of there's just the department showing support for one another, but also from Noah Zimmerman, Lance Corporal Noah Zimmerman, who is like a little brother to Officer Brandon Stalker. He talked about how Officer Stalker really would go the extra mile with him, not just, hey, you know, why do you want to be a Marine, but how can I help you be a Marine? How can I help you achieve your goals? Uh, he ran with him in the mornings. He helped him get physically fit so he could achieve what he wanted to achieve in life. And this sense of brotherhood now, we see all of these other officers coming together to say, we've got it from here. You've helped us. And like brothers, we will be there to see this thing through. So for those of you just tuning in, you can see these are the cars lined up to honor Officer Stalker. They stretch all the way down there on North Douglas Road. Uh, blue, a sea of blue and red lights as far as the eye can see. Um, if you look on the outside, you can see police cars leaving uh, right up there. I'm going to see if I can zoom in right up there. You see police cars beginning to leave. Uh, that is the beginning of this processional from other departments starting. So, of course, we had Toledo police and officer stalkers, friends and family lead this off. And now we have other departments beginning to fall in line as well. This is so hard for the Toledo Police Department because you have to think they've lost four officers um, in just about six months. Two of them were young fathers killed in the line of duty from the same police class, Officer Anthony Dia and Officer Brandon Stalker. But they also lost uh, Kevin Dumas on Thanksgiving Day and also Sergeant Palmer while he was on vacation with his family. So this is just very hard for the department to have lost so many men that they loved and respected in such a short time. Two of those deaths were line of duty, two were off duty, but it doesn't make the pain any less. You can see all of these departments just ready to begin their show of support. It takes a little bit in these situations because they have to go single file and it takes quite a ways to quite a while um, to get down to Toledo Memorial Park where this processional is heading. 
I know all of your condolences and warm wishes mean the world to Officer Stalker's family and the Toledo Police Department. I've heard from multiple officers and um, even family members who've said that they really do appreciate the love that they're getting from the community. It really helps to make things feel less alone to know that you're not going through this by yourself. This sense of brotherhood is really what a huge factor that defines police because it's that shared sense of loyalty that no matter what, I would have your back. And that's something we would hear often about Officer Stalker, how he would go out of his way to respond to a call to back up fellow Toledo police officers, even though that call was way out of his way. He didn't have to do it, but he would go just to show support. He had a great big smile. Everyone talked about how loving and his sense of humor, what that meant to them. And for those of you just tuning in, we are beginning the processional. The hearse has left and now we have the outer line of the police cars beginning to leave this outer column. Um, we are we have hundreds of police cruisers from departments all across the Midwest represented here today. Three columns stretching all the way down the street here on North Douglas. And as you can see, that outer row is beginning to flow pretty soon. The two middle rows, this outer and middle row will begin to flow as well. So you guys, thank you for tuning in. Of course, you can continue to watch on WTOL. I'm gonna sign off this Facebook Live, but keep an eye out. Other people will be checking in along the route um, from other parts of this funeral procession to honor Officer Brandon Stalker, where he'll ultimately be laid to rest at Toledo Memorial Park. Be safe, guys.